Okay, you asked for it, so I'm making it. Here's every single Mazda MX-5 Miata slash Yunos Roadster NA Special Edition ever made between 1989 and 1998. Plus the most notable concept cars too. Strap yourself in, because there's over 100 of them. Now, before we begin, if you want to know anything at all about the Mazda Miata's inception, please do check out my video on the history of the Mazda MX-5 Miata NA. It's packed with information on the car and the people who made it, ranging from the sketch that started it all, to the creative engineering solutions that make it such a special car. Right, let's get cracking. The Mazda MX-5 Miata NA was launched back in 1989, and it took no time at all for the first noteworthy variant to be produced. Literally, no time at all. You see, at the Miata's grand unveiling at the Chicago Auto Show, the standard production car was shown alongside the Club Racer. Finished in canary yellow, a colour that wasn't available on the production cars due to a problem with the paints, the car had a beefier body, fat tyres, a modified exhaust, and most notably, flush, non-poppy-uppy headlights. Those in Japan were the first to be able to buy a special Miata, as when the Yunos Roadster, as the car was named for its home market, went on sale in September of 1989, purchasers could opt for a special package version of their Roadster, which included power steering, those famous seven-spoke alloy wheels, electric windows and a Momo steering wheel. Perhaps it's not an edition per se, and I certainly won't be featuring every optional package offered on the MX-5 Miata NA in this video, but this one has got the word special in there, so I figured it was worth mentioning. Next, in July of 1990, the Yunos Roadster V Special was rolled into Yunos dealership showrooms all over Japan. Produced to celebrate the Roadster's first anniversary, the car was finished in Neo Green, which looks a lot like British Racing Green. It had a tan interior, a tan roof, a nardi wooden steering wheel and matching wooden gear knob and handbrake trim, and came with a swanky CD player as standard. A few months later, over in the UK, Mazda revealed one of their most mythical MX-5 special editions, the Mazda MX-5 BBR Turbo. In response to criticism of the MX-5's low-powered motor, Mazda joined forces with Brody Britain Racing to offer the UK market an MX-5 that could do 0 to 60 miles per hour two seconds faster than the standard model by using an extra 36 brake horsepower and 54 pound-feet of torque. I covered this car in quite some detail in my aforementioned Miata NA history video, so do take a look if you'd like to learn more about it. Now, whilst it is widely thought that the BBR Turbo fitted MX-5s were only sold in the UK, according to my research, this isn't the case. As to momentarily jump forward a few years, in 1993, the Netherlands received the MX-5 Sports Edition, which was most notably fitted with Brody Britain Racing's Turbo Kit. Actually, my research suggests the car was fitted with a whole host of other performance and luxury extras too, including Kony adjustable dampers and lightweight BBS alloys, making this MX-5 one of the most high-performance variants offered through the car's lifespan. That previously released Yunos Roadster V Special I mentioned began a pattern of Mazda releasing a special edition variant to their home market, and then, if proved successful enough, a short while later offering a similar special edition to other markets around the world. So over the next 12 months, Australia, the USA, Canada, the UK, and continental Europe all received their V-Special equivalent limited edition MX-5 Miatas. 
sporting the same charm as their Japanese inspiration and differing only minorly in order for each variant to better suit the preferences of the market it was being sold to. New Zealand received their V-Special equivalent in 1993, named the MX-5 limited edition there too. In August of 1991, Japan's first limited edition Yunos Roadster was unveiled. The J Limited came with the special package as standard and was available exclusively in the colour Sunburst Yellow. It also had the wooden Nardi trim from the V Special and stainless steel tread plates. Production was limited to 800 units and they all sold within 24 hours. A short while later, back over in the UK, Mazda launched the UK's rarest MX-5 NA, the polarising MX-5 Le Mans, produced to celebrate the company's first ever victory at the Le Mans 24 hours. Only 24 of the cars were made and it featured BBR's turbo upgrade as standard, along with some fancy wheels and a garish paint do that matched the race winning 787B race car. In December of 1991, an even less known about MX-5 was announced. The M2 1001 wasn't produced by Mazda directly, but instead by a division of around 30 Mazda engineers and designers who worked for Mazda but outside the confines of the corporation on special projects. The car was a Yunos Roadster for hardcore drivers. It had its engine upgraded to push out 130 brake horsepower, a stiffened chassis, stiffer suspension, wider tyres wrapped around 15 inch alloy wheels and a roll bar. Mazda announced they were going to sell 300 of these cars and they were so popular the company had to employ a lottery system to fairly assign the cars to the thousands of eager people looking to purchase an example. That same month, Australia got its second special edition, the Malibu Gold. It was yellow, limited to just 55 units, and shares a similar peculiarity as our next car, the Sunburst Yellow Miata. Whilst not technically a special edition, this yellow Miata was however limited. You see, problems with Mazda's yellow paint remained and meant that the process of colouring the yellow cars was complicated and expensive. And as a result, Mazda limited the use of the colour Sunburst Yellow to just 1,519 cars for the United States and approximately 500 for Canada. So they're certainly rare and worth a mention. At the same time, Mazda offered the USA and Canada a second non-official special edition in the Brilliant Black Miata. The Brilliant Black Miata was initially intended to be sold as a special edition until Mazda decided it would be better offered as a package extra. However, this change led to some confusion, with Brilliant Black Miatas being advertised by some Mazda dealers as special editions, and even marketing advertisements in Canada incorrectly referred to the Brilliant Black as a special edition. So it's no wonder the car is considered an honorary special edition. In addition to its black paint, the car also had a tan interior as standard, with a tan roof, as well as alloy wheels, power steering, a radio cassette unit and electric windows. It was a continuation of Mazda's aforementioned strategy of releasing variants to their home markets and then later selling similar special editions over the world. As the Brilliant Black was launched in response to the Yunos Roadster V Special now being available in the colour Brilliant Black over in Japan. April saw this black and tan combo make it to the UK on the MX-5 SE which stood for special equipment and came most notably with ABS as standard and also again to continental Europe on the MX-5 Black Special. A few months and several thousand miles later, 
The Yunos Roadster S Special was unveiled in Japan to celebrate the car's third anniversary. This edition was available in either brilliant black or classic red and featured stiffer Bilstein suspension, a front strut brace under the bonnet, lovely 14 inch BBS alloy wheels, a leather Nardi steering wheel and gear knob, and a rear spoiler. This driver focused edition was also only available with a manual transmission. In December of 1992, the M2 division announced their next limited run roadster, the M2 1002. The M2 1002 was about luxury rather than performance, with beautiful wood trim from Yamaha, their piano division I'm sure, not their motorbike factory, encasing the centre console and ivory leather lining most of the interior. It sounds wonderful, but surprisingly it was a flop. Evidently customers wanted more performance from their roadsters rather than comfort. Much more popular was the Yunos Roadster S Limited that Mazda unveiled the same month for their home market. This version was limited to 1000 units and was available exclusively in Brilliance Black, but this time with an impressive red interior, gold coloured BBS alloys and an upgraded Pioneer CD player and speaker system. Half a year later, in 1993, Mazda sent its S Limited off to be sold in America, known there as the Miata Limited Edition. Production was limited to just 1,500 units. Mazda Canada was celebrating their 25th anniversary, so they ordered 500 of the Miata Limited Editions too, and lobbed a larger rear wing on the back of each car as a birthday gift to themselves. France got something similar in the MX-5 Que et Bois, which translates to leather and wood. Whilst the red leather was switched for a less loud beige leather trim, the car retained its BBS wheels, stiffer Bilstein suspension and exclusivity, with just 120 cars offered. Plus, on this edition, purchasers could apparently opt to have their initials etched onto a plate in the cabin if they so wished. Austria received a hardened Roadster 2 in the MX-5 Sports, which wore the same Bilstein dampers as its French, American and Japanese counterparts. This time, however, the car was painted silver. Sadly, the UK didn't get the opportunity to enjoy a version of this sportier variant, as it wasn't offered to the British market. Instead, the UK received an update to their popular special equipment, the Special Equipment 2 was essentially the same as the previous year's Special Equipment, but with different alloy wheels and a different stereo. Not exactly a thrilling update. Much more interesting was the MX-5 Classic Red Limited Edition, produced for the Australian market. It was red, had a tan leather interior with all the usual leather accessories, and very notably, came with a signed photo of Toshihiko Harai, the MX-5 NA's chief engineer. 1993 saw Mazda experimenting with alternative methods of propelling their MX-5 Miatas. First with electricity, using the battery-powered MX-5. Three of these prototype cars were produced to test the viability of using electric motors to power ordinary cars. The electric MX-5 weighed over 1,400 kilograms and took 21 and a half seconds to reach 60 miles per hour, making it slow and boring around the corners. So Mazda concluded that using electric motors to power ordinary cars was not a viable option. So Mazda turned to hydrogen taking an MX-5 Miata and fitting it with a rotary engine from an RX-7 and modifying it to be hydrogen powered. It was considerably more successful than the electric powered car, with this concept being able to accelerate to 60 miles per hour in a much more respectable 13 seconds. Mind you, that is still 4.3 seconds slower than the standard petrol MX-5. 
Really, it's a good thing that petrol power prevailed, as during this time, Mazda had been doubling down on their combustion engines, revealing in July of 1993 a facelift to the Mazda MX-5 Miata slash Yonos Roadster that included an engine upgrade, increasing its capacity from 1.6 litres to 1.8 litres. This facelift brought with it a flurry of new special editions, including the Yonos Roadster V Special 2, the J Limited 2, and an updated Yonos Roadster S Special, all of which were very similar to their predecessors. A far more unique special edition released that same year was the Yonos Roadster Tokyo Limited. Just 40 were produced, and whilst the brilliant black and tan hood exterior combination had been seen many times before, the car's sumptuous ivory leather interior that was taken from what was left of the failed M2 1002 gave the affordable Roadster a far more refined look inside the cabin. When the 1.8 litre engine arrived over in Australia in 1993, it brought with it a new MX-5 variant. The MX-5 Clubman wasn't technically a special edition, but was more of an add-on package, offering a more sporty driving experience with Bilstein suspension, thicker anti-sway bars, and a manual steering rack. In 1994, the 1.8 litre facelift cars arrived around the rest of the world, and they brought with them a plethora of special editions and special packages. Austria received the MX-5 SE, which was similar to the Australian Clubman, although, interestingly, whilst one would presume SE stood for Special Edition, as it had done elsewhere around the world, according to my research, this Austrian SE stood for Safety Edition, likely due to the variant's inclusion of both ABS and airbags. America received the much more widely known Miata M Edition. Production was limited to approximately 3,000 units, and the car was finished in a deep blue with a tan interior and tan roof. Unveiled at the same time was the considerably more impressive R package. Not a special edition, but the package added upgraded springs, sway bars, bushings, and those stiffer Bilstein dampers, whilst doing away with, or at least not making available, the likes of power steering, ABS, and an automatic gearbox. It made for a noticeably sharper handling Miata that critics praised highly. Of course, the most sporty Miatas were reserved for Mazda's home market. In July of 1994, Mazda unveiled the Yonos Roadster RS Limited. The car had a lightened flywheel, stiffer suspension, an adjusted final drive ratio, thicker anti-roll bars, and coolest of all, Recaro carbon Kevlar bucket seats. However, still, the RS was not the most hardcore Yonos Roadster available to buy in 1994. That title goes to the M2 1028. The M2 division had been hard at work in the two years since the M2 1002 had flopped. They'd developed the red on red M2 1003, the M2 1006, a V6 engine, 220 brake horsepower, wide body roadster, a Ferrari inspired Yonos roadster called the M2 1008, and the M2 1031, a brilliantly designed Yonos roadster adapted to allow wheelchair users the opportunity to enjoy driving the car. Sadly, the M2 1031 project was abandoned as due to budget cuts at Mazda, the entire M2 division was being shut down. Fortunately, before their doors closed forever, the M2 team managed to twist Mazda's arm and offer a third and final M2 car for sale. That M2 1028. 
It used aluminium extensively, and as a result weighed just 960 kilograms, yet it had 30% better torsional rigidity than a standard Yonos Roadster, and combined with its stiffer suspension, roll bar, and modified engine that produced 140 brake horsepower, it proved to be an absolute weapon, and popular too, with all 300 cars selling out. Whilst 1994 was primarily a year for sporty special edition Miatas, Mazda Switzerland broke the mould by offering the Swiss package, an optional add-on to make the MX-5 experience a little more luxurious and, well, Swiss, I guess. 1995 saw the Mazda MX-5 Miata turn six years old, and Mazda figured what better way to celebrate than with a whole load of special editions and concepts. First, in January, came the Yunos Roadster G Limited, a blue-on-blue -blue limited edition car that focused on adding a couple of luxury items over the standard Roadster, including an improved sound system and shiny alloy wheels. A month later, the R Limited was released, it had a red leather interior and wooden steering wheel, and had the RS Limited's lightened flywheel, altered gear ratio, and BBS alloy wheels. It was intended to bridge the gap between the luxury of the V-Spec and the performance of the RS Limited. It sold well. Europe received a splash of colour in a yellow limited edition MX-5. Being known as the MX-5 California in the UK, the MX-5 VS, or Versione Speciali in Italy, the MX-5 Sunracer in Germany and Switzerland, and the, I guess not incorrectly named, MX-5 Yellow in Austria, and the Sunburst Yellow in the Netherlands. America hadn't been shortchanged during this time either. First, they got to feast their eyes on the Mazda Miata M Speedster a concept car that had a 200 brake horsepower supercharged engine, bigger wheels, better brakes, stiffer suspension, and most importantly, looked awesome. The Miata M Speedster isn't particularly well known, but it's positively world famous compared to the car it was based upon. You see, a year earlier, in 1994, at the 21st annual Monterey Historic Automobile Races, Ferrari was being tributed at the event. So Mazda, to honour the great Italian Mark, produced a Miata concept inspired by historical Ferrari shapes, known simply as the Miari. Very little information about this car exists, and even fewer photos and more photos can't be taken, as a very short time after the historic racing event, the Miyari was torn apart and turned into that M Speedster. Halfway through 1995, Mazda offered a second variant of the Miata M edition to the US market. It was similar to the first, but came in metallic purple with tan leather trim, and had 15-inch alloy wheels. Interestingly, the M Edition 2 marks an occasion when the US market introduced a special edition that was later offered to the Japanese market in the similarly specced Yunos Roadster VR Limited Combination A, which was offered for sale in Japan around six months later at the beginning of 1996. The reason for this switch around in which country receives a special edition first was likely because by this point, sales of the Yunos Roadster in Japan were dropping rapidly. Mazda only sold 7,178 Roadsters in Japan in 1995, whilst the American market was still giddy over the Miata, and as a result, Mazda sold just over 20,000 examples the same year. Therefore, Mazda probably started to cater to the American buyers more than the Japanese buyers, creating special editions for the US market, and then offering a variant of that edition to the Japanese dealerships, rather than the other way around as it had previously been. And as was often the case, 
Europe continued to adopt special editions produced for Mazda's primary markets, with variants of the M edition being sold in the UK and Italy as the MX-5 Merlot, the Cosmo in Germany, the Art Vin in Austria and the Netherlands, and most cool of all, the Red Pepper in Switzerland, all released for sale in mid-1996. But back to 1995 quickly, as Mazda still wasn't done with releasing special editions that year. Along came Britain's MX-5 Glen Eagles, a special edition finished in Montego blue with champagne leather trim and named after the famous Scottish golf club. The Glen Eagles even had a Scottish tartan covered gear lever gator inside. A series of dark blue special editions found their way to Japan and New Zealand that same year on the again updated Yonos Roadster S Special, which was also available in a range of other colours, and the MX-5 Special Equipment. Italy received the shade in 1996 on an edition known as the Montego Blue, and the next year a similar Similar blue made it to the Netherlands in 1997, available on the MX-5 M edition. Right, after all of that back and forth, let's dive into 1996. We're getting close now. So, Mazda kicked off the year by unveiling that aforementioned Merlot-coloured Yunos Roadster VR Limited Combination A, and they did so alongside releasing another special edition, the VR Limited Combination B. It was dark green, not neo green mind you, with a matching green soft top and a black leather interior. At the same time, Mazda Australia launched the MX-5 1.8 limited edition, finished in neo green with that, now I imagine, very familiar V-Spec-esque tan interior. February saw the unveiling of perhaps the most eye-catching MX-5 Miata concept, the M Coupe. The car was designed by Tom Matano, the same chap who designed the Miata Roadster, and he had hoped the coupe would be taken into production. Unfortunately, Mazda intended the concept to be simply a show car, and it remained as such. I talk about this car in quite some detail in my NA history video, so take a look if you want to learn more. Midway through the year came the third Miata M edition, this time in starlight mica blue with a beige leather interior and matching roof. It had a whole load of goodies, including 15 inch alloy wheels, ABS, aircon and a nardi wooden gear knob and handbrake handle. It also, rather coolly, had remote keyless entry, the first Miata to have so. No more keys indoors for M edition owners. Japan received a couple more special edition roadsters. Along came the Yunos Roadster B2 Limited. B2 stood for bright and blue, which was somewhat of an ironic name considering the car was finished in a lovely, albeit rather dark shade of twilight blue. Yet perhaps more ironically named was the Yunos Roadster R2 Limited. R2 standing for racy and red, despite the car only being available in chast white. Mind you, it did have a red and black interior. A not dissimilar red and black interior, in fact, to what you'll find on the MX-5 bicolor, made available for the German market. This was a low-spec special edition, with steel wheels as standard and the revised 1.6 litre 90 brake horsepower engine that Mazda produced for the European market to be sold alongside the more expensive 1.8. Many of those red wine and yellow coloured special editions we chatted about not long ago also had these less powerful motors. 1996 saw more 90 brake horsepower, low spec special editions released too, including the neo green black interior Monaco offered to the British public and the similarly skinned MX-5 Nova edition offered to the French market. The Nova came to be due to the French magazine, Nova, collaborating with Mazda to produce this special edition, one of which was offered as a prize on a Parisian radio giveaway. 
The next year, in 1997, there was another collaborative French MX-5 Special Edition, the Mazda MX-5 JVC Jazz Festival. Available in a collection of colours, this 90 brake horsepower Special Edition was produced in collaboration with JVC to celebrate the upcoming Jazz Festival being sponsored by the Electronics Giant. The car had two-tone Alcantara and leather seats, and, of course, all came with an upgraded JVC stereo in the dashboard. 1997 was Mazda's last year producing the MX-5 NA, but they didn't relent in the special editions. In fact, by my calculations, that year they released 15 of them. Let's quickly blast through them. January saw the UK receive their first special edition of the year in the MX-5 Dakar Limited Edition. Finished in Twilight Blue Metallic, the same colour as the Yunos Roadster B2's Twilight Blue Mica, the Dakar was limited to just 400 units and had grey leather seats, walnut trim in the cabin and a host of other goodies. Mazda UK wasn't done there though, not by a long shot. May saw two new limited edition MX-5s arrive in Britain. Firstly came the MX-5 Monza, a 90 brake horsepower, neo-green, black trimmed variant limited to 800 units, named of course after the famous Italian race circuit. Speaking of Italy, at the same time they received the MX-5 British Green, which was, bar a few alterations, the same as the Monza. So, in 1997, Britain received a neo-green 1.6-litre car named to celebrate Italian racing heritage, and Italy received a neo-green 1.6-litre car to celebrate British racing heritage. I guess Mazda just thought, why not? 13 days after unveiling the Monza, the MX-5 Harvard was offered to the British public. A 1.8 litre car finished in Silverstone Metallic with burgundy leather upholstery and a name inspired by the famed American University. And again, Italy received a special edition in this exact same colour the same year, called the MX-5 Silver. Mind you, this one did have a number of trim differences from its British equivalent. In October, us Brits received another special edition, the MX-5 Classic. This car had a black exterior and came with black leather seats with red contrast stitching and a scattering of wood trim around the cabin. Germany and Austria received a Classic too, this time with a 1.6 litre engine. These MX-5 Classics were finished in either Brilliant Black, Twilight Blue Mica or Silverstone Metallic and had a fair number of luxury features for a budget-powered MX-5. Switzerland received this variant too, however there it was known as the SV. And they also had an exclusive MX-5 Special Edition called the HE version, finished in black with a choice of five different alloy wheels available. Over the Atlantic Ocean, America had been receiving a helping of special edition Miatas as well. US dealerships saw yet another M edition arrive upon their shores, this time finished in a shade of marina green mica with a tan leather interior and soft top. This shade of green made it to Canada too, on the Miata Speedster Edition, a name that perhaps makes this special edition sound a little cooler than it really is, as in reality, the Speedster didn't have any performance upgrades as standard and was primarily identifiable due to its 15-inch alloy wheels, lip rear spoiler and Speedster stickers. In July, the USA received the STO. STO stood for Special Touring Option. However, it's often joked that in this edition's instance, STO should have stood for Stuff Taken Off, as whilst the car does have a lovely tan leather interior, power wing mirrors and windows, 
it does without useful touring features such as air conditioning, ABS and cruise control. 1997 saw New Zealand receive their final MX-5 Special Edition in the M Limited Merlot and it was a grand finale for the New Zealand market as along with its fancy wheels and tan leather interior this special edition included a complete performance exhaust system, platinum tipped spark plugs and a K&N air filter to free up the induction system. Just 25 of these rather special special editions were produced. An example of just how rapidly the Yunos Roadster's demand was shrinking in Japan towards the end of its lifespan is that in 1997, Mazda offered just one new limited edition to their home market. In August, the Yunos Roadster SR Limited was announced and marketed as a sort of thank you gift to all the loyal Yunos Roadster fans that had supported the car over the previous eight years. The SR Limited was limited to just 700 units and was available to purchase in either sparkle green metallic or chast white. It was also the last Yunos Roadster special edition produced. Finally came 1998. Production of the MX-5 had ceased by this point, but that didn't stop Mazda squeezing out one final special edition. The Mazda MX-5 Berkeley was announced in January of 1998, again named after a prestigious American university. The car was available exclusively in the same sparkle green metallic as the Yunos Roadster SR Limited and came with a black and grey leather interior and dark burr wood trim, along with a whole host of other extras that were, quite possibly, leftovers from all the other special editions produced over the past eight and a half years. So, there you go. That's 86 special editions, 6 very noteworthy add-on packages and 9 concepts, 101 Mazda MX-5 Miatas slash Yunos Roadsters from all across the globe and by my count at least, every single non-standard variant of the beloved Roadster produced between 1989 and 1998. If you enjoyed this video, please do consider subscribing to my channel and taking a look at my other videos. If you're a fan of the Mazda MX-5 Miata, and if you made it to the end of this video, I'm pretty sure you must be. Have a watch of my series, Ireland in an MX-5, as it may well be right up your street. Thanks.